Hi. Okay, so what we're going to do is use the water chemistry set. Um, if you look at the Niskin right now, you see the water level is here because I've done dissolved organic carbon. So you start off with it a little bit down because of doing that first. Alright, the next thing we're going to do is, let's just focus in uh, on this section. Okay. What we're going to do first of all is we're going to turn on the pressure. So we're going to open the scuba tank. All right. Turn this valve here so it's in line. That means it's open. Tighten down my high pressure. And then watching out for it. It comes in pretty strong once you start getting pressure on here. There you go. See how quickly that guy loosened off a little bit. It drops way down. One, two, three turns. See how quickly it comes up? Okay. So let's stay stay below five. Let's stay on four right now. Okay. So now we have pressure going through the system, but I've got this spigot closed so no water is going to flow. The first thing I want to do is I want to pass a couple of hundred mils of water through the system. And to make sure I'm not going to mess that up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of lab tape here and I'm going to put it two increments, these are marked, the Niskins are marked, these scratches here, that marks 100 mils. I'm going to put that down 200 mils. So do is put it about there, rounding up a little bit, because I do want to flush the system as well as I can. All right. Then, also notice that I have my filter holder on here. There's no filters in here. I just want to rinse out the inside of it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open this just let it run. Okay. Now what I always do is have some towel on hand so if you ever start having leaks anywhere you can start just mopping the water away from there so you can start to see where you might be leaking so you can remedy it. At the moment I have a little leak up there. Okay. So that's running nicely now. Okay. The fact I had water up here shows lots of times my top ring is not down tight enough, which happens um, a lot when you don't have a filter in there to pack it. Okay. All right. So I'm going to stop now. 200 mils is going through. My pressure dropped because I added extra air in here and it's starting to compact in the Niskin. So make sure you go back and keep checking your pressure. Alright, so now I'm going to turn it off, everything's cool, okay. So that's the flush, I've now flushed the system. What I want to do now is I want to collect my uh, water for my slides. So what I have here, and the, the slide water we collect without any filtration at all. So what I have here is I have two falcon tubes, 15 mil falcons, one labelled cyber, one labelled dappy. Um, lots of times we reuse these on cruises so we don't burn through a lot of consumables case we run out later on but what I want to do with these is I want to triple rinse them really quickly and then I want to fill them up two mils okay so first of all I'll show you the triple rinse just throw a mil or two in there put the cap on shake it up not vigorously violently or anything but just make sure you rinse out the inside then flip it out and then we'll do it two mils. Okay, a little bit more. A little bit too much. There you go, two mils exactly. Alright. Do that for each of these guys. And you don't want to go through too much volume just on rinsing, because later on you're going to start to notice all of that lost volume. So make sure it is just like a couple of mils just to rinse it out real nice. Okay. Alright. There you go, two mils. It's actually really good. Okay. Sweet. So I'll put those aside for the slide making, um, which involves fixation, staining, that kind of stuff. Okay, so right now I've turned the spigot off here. What I want to do is I want to take the filter holder off. So I undo this ring here drop it down, break it open, 
And then usually what I do is I just lay it on the side like that. I need to lay this guy up here like this. The next thing you want to do is put a fax, uh, flow cytometry filter in there. So we're going to use a 10 or an 8 micron filter for this. So you just pop it open. It's a nuclear pore track etch membrane um, filter. Okay. So just pop it open. Do a little tweezers. Okay, so taking a little divider out. Okay, then I've got my little filter. Now notice this thing is fine. You'll often start losing it if you don't keep track. If you pan. Okay, so I laid that in the center there. Put this little divider is not hiding anyone. Okay, I double check that my filter is actually seated nicely in the center of the filter holder. I don't know if you can see it. Okay. And then what I do is I lay this back on top like this. Back this off. And then slide the little teeth in. And I'll show you how that goes. So there's little teeth here that fit into the crenellations on the side. And then I tighten that up snug it. Reconnect that. Sorry, what I was going to say is that because these filters are so fine, if you don't take them out as soon as you're done using them, you'll forget they're in there and add other filters on top, and then you'll wonder why your water is not filtering. All right, so that's nice and snug. Okay, so what we want to do is just run a little bit of water through that filter, make sure that any impurities have been washed out. And the next thing we want to do is we want to grab our flow cytometry samples. So with these, all we do is fill them up. A one mil sample and above is what we try and get here. So we'll just go. Okay. All right. So I've got like a 1.5 mil sample. Right. So we we'll do that three times. Now on the ship, I would be keeping these in a little holder like this. Can you see that? Yeah. A IP2 holder. Okay. So put those here. Normally what I do at this time is I add the fixative that goes with them, but um, and then while I'm doing, they're fixing while I do other things, and I set my timer to 15 minutes so as soon as my 15 minute timer goes after I've added my fixative then I drop these straight into liquid nitrogen. Right. You want to make sure with your flow cytometry is between 15 and 30 minutes fixation. Do not go over 30 minutes otherwise they'll lose their autofluorescence and we won't be able to det determine heterotroph from autotroph. Alright. Then we're done with that. This filter can also be taken off and passed along to subsequent uh, subsequent miskins, and just run some water through there before you um, before you take water off these samples. Okay. So we just crack that open again and see how invisible. I mean, this, this thing is just vanishing. Yeah. Okay. So take that off. Get rid of it. Sit there. The next thing I want to do are my nutrient samples. So, my nutrient sample filters in here. I 
set in there. You want to pack these back in so that they don't fall anywhere. So this filter is a um, much finer porto, so you can see, you can actually see it when you put it on there. And depending on how you want to do it, you can hold it like this. So you can see those teeth, you can see the crenellation, you slot it in, and then you clamp it down. Okay, just snug it up, don't over tighten again. Then put it back on, okay, ready to roll. A little bit of water go through it, just to flush out any impurities again. Starting to notice a theme, then we're going to triple rinse a nutrient bottle. A nutrient bottle is just scintillation vial. Right. You'll note that when I do this, I put a few mils into here, fill it up to, I don't know if you can see that, around about here. Then what I do is I just place the cap on top like that and shake. And you'll see water goes everywhere, but that means you're also rinsing the threading of the bottle. Also, when I hold the cap, I don't put my fingers on the inside of it. I don't put my fingers on the inside of this. Make sure you, you don't get your fingers into the sample bottle or anything. It, tends to, it contaminates it very quickly. Then I slot my little nutrient sample bottle in here. I can raise this bar up or down, depending on how close I want to get it to the, uh, the outlet of my filter holder. But I've noticed in big seas, your water can tend to... the, the the waterfall, the falling water can tend to track either side, so moving it closer up in big seas is always a good thing. You can leave your cap on top here, that's what these little recessed holes are for, so you don't lose your caps again in big seas. Okay, so everything's rinsed, everything's nice, and you'll note that the, the insert of the lid almost comes down to the level flush with the lid, so, but it doesn't quite reach there, so it's not going to get contaminated sitting up there. Okay. Then, because I've triple rinsed it, all I do is fill this up. You can imagine again if I have four niskins, I go. Ch -ch 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 -ch. I find that making every niskin uh, come to the same level before I move on to the next step is really good to keep things coordinated. I fill this little guy up to the bottom of the shoulder right here. I'll show you that in a second. Again, not getting my fingers all up and everything, I close it up. So you can see the water level is just below the shoulder here. All right. I nice sampled it. All right, that goes off to the freezer. And then I want to break this down again and put the next filter in. So right now I've done flow cytometry samples. I've collected my slide samples. The next thing I want to collect is particular organic matter. Okay, just put that on the side like that. Now, particular organic matter samples are different to the sample we've done so far because with particular organic matter, it's actually the filter that we collect, not the liquid. Okay. So what we need to do is handle our filter very carefully. All right. So our particular organic matter comes in an envelope, a pre-combusted aluminum foil envelope. You open it up, and you'll find in here usually a stack of five uh, GFF glass fiber filters. Okay. What you want to do is take a pair of tweezers that are used, um, that you've dipped in acid to clean uh, every night um, and so that you've got any contaminants off them because we don't want to add any carbon to this filter. All right, then you take your filter and you just lay it on to the filter holder. Okay. Glass fiber filters tend to get kind of mushy when they get wet, so treat them with care. Then I'm going to do the thing again, put the teeth in, okay. Now this, this filter is very easy to over tighten because it's so thick. So what I do is I just snug it up, again don't over tighten it, and then I put it on. Now if you start to notice, maybe we'll get that treat right now. Um, if you over tighten it and then you open this spigot and no water flows, it tends to mean that you've over tightened that, the filter holder. And then what you have to do is back it off a little bit, back off the top ring a little bit, and let water flow um, almost sort of up and around so you end up with water flowing all over the place and then just tighten it down until that flow stops and then mop it all up and then after that you're good to go with your particular organic matter. So with particular organic matter because our filter is our sample we once again want to mark how much volume goes through. This time we want to do 500 mils come through so what I do again at the start of this 
is I mark off where that is. So one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, and mark it with my tape. You can see the tape? So I've got one, two, three, four, oops, one more. Down there, okay. One, two, three, four. 200 mils, 200 mils, 300 mils, 300 mils. I was right. Okay, it goes to that. Alright. So, then all I do is open it up and see how it flows. Not super fast, but not really slow either. Alright, I'm going to double check my pressure. I'm still on 3 psi, so that's good. It hasn't been released. And I just let that drip through. Okay. There we go. So I increased the pressure a little bit, now it's flowing really nicely. Okay, so while that's happening, I'll talk you through this. Um, your aluminum foil, uh, your the, the particular organic matter filter then gets placed in pre-combusted aluminum foil and wrapped up. So that comes in a, uh, the aluminum foil you used to wrap comes in pre-combusted aluminum foil. Okay, so this is an aluminum foil packet full of uh, a pre-combusted aluminum foil packet full of pre-combusted aluminum foil, which seems redundant, but um, it's necessary. Okay. Now is a good time, I find, to take my little flow cytometry samples and fix them. Okay. So to do that, I'm going to add 66... Oh, I forgot that. Okay, I'll look that up, and I'll put it in the notes section. But I add... Um, glitteraldehyde, I believe, to these samples. Um, but look that up in the protocol, just to make sure I don't want to give the wrong figure and then have it ruin everything. Okay, but now is a good time. What I often do, and I think this is the best way, is I take the lids off of my cryovals, I place them upside down, and then I drop the fixative onto the inside of the lid. And then I do that for every single one. Often you'll end up with like 12 in a single night that you want to do. So you place them all like this. So see how I've got my cryovals and then I've got my lids. So I place, drop the fixative into all the caps. And then what I do is I put the lid on, but don't shake it up yet. All right, so you've got the fixative sitting inside the cap. Right. Do, do, do. Now once I've done that, and I've put all the caps back on, all I do then is I put my finger over the top of all of them, and I invert back and forth a few times, and that way you're getting the fixative for every single sample go into the sample at the exact same time. So that then when I set my timer for 15 minutes afterwards, I know that every single one of these has been exposed to fixative for that 15 minutes or you got 15 minutes to half an hour. So then when I go to drop them all into the flash freezer, I never have to worry about how long it took me to fix from this guy down to someone further down. Okay. That's how I do that. All right, so this has been flowing. So we now got 500 mils has gone through. All right, what I want to do now is taking a 10 mil syringe Often what I'll do is I'll open one of these at the start of the cruise and I'll just keep it in its packaging for the length of the cruise and that's just my air syringe, okay? What I do is I take the filter off. Go. Make sure it's nice and dry on top. Then I fill the air, the syringe with air. Cool. Screw it on and flush all the excess liquid through to get that filter nice and dry. I usually do that twice because it's much easier to handle a dry um, glass fiber filter than it is to handle a wet one. Okay, that goes back. Right. Then I pop this open. Okay. Now, what you have left in here is a glass fiber filter. Often it'll be quite colored from the water you've passed through it. All right, now, what I do next is, and I should have done this before during that time, is I take, I open up my packaging and I pull out my aluminum foil. 
my sheet of aluminum foil. They come in packs of five too. Then what I do is I take it and I crease it just a little bit down the middle there. So it's nice and creased now. You can see that. All right. Then I place that down the ground. And what I do is I take my, my GFF from here. Now these things often are very mushy around the edges. And when you go to grab them, you have to grab it and fold it so that you're protecting what's on that surface from contamination. But lots of times, especially after you pass 500 mils through here, it gets really, really mushy and tends to tear. So what I do, handling the filter as little as possible, just grabbing the edge there, I try and drag it over. Okay. And then just pat it down a little bit there. I'm trying not to rub my forceps all over the filter. I'm trying to handle as little as possible, but keep it folded. It's much better to have it folded and a little bit handled than to have it open and flopping around everywhere. Then I just grab the corner here, again with just my forcep tips, put, my hand, put the uh, filter holder down, and then I place the sandwich, the folder filter, in that fold that I put into my, into my foil, and then I fold it up. And that way I've kept my, you can see, I've kept my, GF, my TFF really nicely folded. It, none of that sample is exposed to anything. And then I fold that nicely. Then I fold in the side, I fold in the other side, I fold in the top and then I label the front with the volume filtered every single time. Then that gets put in a Ziploc bag with the final thing that we do where we take a Sterevex filter, we screw it onto here and run all the rest of the volume of each Niskin uh, from a site through one of these. So at the end we pull the, the, the volume of water from each site, which is two Niskins, Everything left over goes through this one filter. And then you screw that on and let it run. That's a good time when this is running to do your slide prep. So you've got your little slide water over here that you uh, either have fixed or haven't fixed. It's often good to fix it earlier on and then have it sit there. So when you start running the extra water through, the last water through the, six, um, the Sterevex, the 0.22 Sterevex, not the 0.45, you can then go and make your slides, um, and then around that time is when you'll be throwing your cryovials for the flow cytometry in. Okay, so I don't want to waste the Sterevix just for showing people how to use it. All you do is screw it on here, and then just flow water through. Now, this is because I didn't take the pressure off. Okay, so the way I can do that is just unclip the... Uh, unclip from up here, but then what you will notice is that the essentially this becomes a siphon <laughs> and all the residual pressure in here just pushes water through. So the only way to stop that is if I disassemble it. I'm going to turn this off now. Mm, okay, the easiest way to do this is. I guess I have a poop as real. All right, I just put the speaker back on. Everything's cool, everything's cool. I flooded the lab, we're gonna be okay. The last thing you wanna do is when the Niskin has run out of water, is you disassemble everything and take your hoses, these hoses here that I was gonna take, and you flick them out like a whip. You just hold them in one end and flick them so that all the liquid in here uh, comes flying out the end and so you store those dry. And then after that, usually we leave the water chemistry set set up overnight for the length of a cruise. And then you just put the Niskins on as you need. Okay, and the last thing is you want to turn off the air tank, otherwise you'll just drain it overnight. Okay, that's all off now. Everybody's happy.